episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. And today we are talking about how to parent your Capricorn child when you are a Cancer mom or a Cancer dad. One of you specifically asked for this video, so I'm happy to provide it today. So we're gonna get into this dynamic and find out how this, these energies are complementary and how they work together. Before we get into it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular, positive parenting with astrology content. So as always, we're going to give an overview of Capricorn energy, then an overview of Cancer energy, and talk about some of the main ways in which these energies interact. So if you've seen my videos on how to parent your Capricorn child, you will know that Capricorn is an earth sign and its modality is cardinal. It's ruled by Saturn, which is the planet of structure and restriction. And as we say often on this channel, kind of the gift of Saturn is that sometimes when your options are limited, you see your path more clearly. That's to show you that restriction and limiting is not always a bad thing because we have so many options and things distracting us in the world today. Sometimes when avenues are closed off to us, that's the universe telling us what we need to be focusing on. Anyway, so structure is very important to the Capricorn child. They need structure in the home. They need predictability, especially emotional consistency from the parent. We'll get into that a little bit more. So they need um, like a stable, predictable home environment and home life. Being an earth sign, a Capricorn also uh, concentrates on kind of material resources. The big stereotype, which I kind of jokingly bring up, is you know Capricorn is like the money bags, always uh, chasing money and other material resources. That's a little simplistic, but the earth signs are, you know, they feel very connected to and find important material resources, money being one of them. Cap is also a very calculating energy. Fire energy, for example, that impulsive, you know, swift to take action, decisive action without thinking things through and calculating things from all angles. That fire energy is not always comfortable to a person with a lot of Capricorn energy in their chart because to a cap, that's not a very comfortable and safe and stable way to live. This kind of shooting from the hip, making decisions and acting impulsively without considering all angles and you know, weighing the pros and cons. So you can expect your Capricorn child to take a long time to make important decisions or to think about things before making the decisions. So Capricorn is more of a loner energy. It's not to say that Capricorn people with Capricorn kids don't like to be around people, but it is typically an energy that is more comfortable being alone, making decisions alone, things like that. When you think about fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, almost all the time, they'll have like an entourage of people around them. That's not to say that fire sign people don't test as introverts once in a while, but they're compelled to be social, they're compelled to interact with other people. And it's not unusual, in fact, it's quite common, for them to have this entourage of people and friends around them. Cap is, is not that way. Cap is more comfortable being alone. They typically, Capricorn typically does not need to be around people all of the time. It's often said about Capricorn children that they are very serious. In fact, one astrologer I know puts it this way, that Capricorn is old when they are young and young when they are old. I hear often, you know, parents telling Capricorn kids, oh, you're so serious, like lighten up, right? It's just, that's the nature of the sign. Cap is stoic. It's, you know, responsibility, taking on responsibility comes very naturally to Capricorn. It's a more serious energy. Okay, now we're gonna talk about cancer, but before we do that, we're talking about the cancer parent here in this dynamic. Remember, the onus, the responsibility for the parent-child relationship rests always with the parent. The child doesn't yet have the emotional maturity and the words to articulate everything, not yet. So it's always the parent's responsibility. You've heard, I'm sure, if you listen to any relationship advice, whether it's parent-child or like romantic relationships or friendships or things like that, experts will say, you know, take responsibility for communication in the relationship. That does not necessarily mean do all the work, okay, in a, in a relationship with peers, with two adults. But in the case of kids, I mean, you are going to have to be doing most of the work because you're the parent and your children are taking guidance from you. Now, cancer is an interesting energy. Um, it is cardinal water. So like Scorpio, 
and Pisces, Cancer people make decisions based on emotion, based on how they feel, based on how the event, the circumstance, the other person makes them feel. They make decisions a lot of the time based on intuition. Now, intuition does not necessarily mean not logical. Intuition is a form of logic. And it's very interesting to study it, but basically intuition is, you know, your mind taking in all these, like these micro data and micro observations and forming this so-called gut reaction regarding what you're taking in. And you don't necessarily know why you're making this decision this way or taking this action, but you intuit it. So water signs are very good at doing that. They're very good at using their intuition, okay, to make decisions and, uh, you know, as far as what to do in relationships. So the cancer parent is very intuitive about what the parent should be doing to strengthen the relationship with the child. You know, and kids are naturally intuitive because they don't yet have all the distractions and stuff that adults have, right? So chances are, if you're the cancer parent as a child, you could intuit a bunch of different things. Like you were very tuned in to people's emotions and motives and just everything happening around you. And it's interesting because especially cancer moms, they're very good at kind of ferreting things out with the kids, even when the kids don't talk to them directly or tell them things directly. They're very good at feeling out like, mm, this is happening or something's not right here. And they can't always put a finger on it. And that's a really good time to ask your kid, hey, I noticed you're a little closed off or you seem a little reserved or you know, you're less talkative than usual or you seem like you may be a little bit down. Is everything okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? You know, if you approach it like that, asking open-ended questions and invitation to connect, inviting the child to connect, that's much more constructive and will be better for opening your kid up to you than if you say, hey, I know something's going on. What, what, tell me, what's going on? What's going on? Is it this, is it this, is it this? So, you know, and Capricorn is a very stoic energy. It's a reserved energy. They're not great at talking about feelings and articulating what's going on. And sometimes, because Capricorn uh, puts a lot of responsibility and pressure on themselves, even Capricorn children, they don't like even admitting to their emotions. They don't like admitting that somebody made them upset or somebody did something to cause them to, be, to feel hurt because they don't like to admit the vulnerability. They don't like to admit that this person in a way had dominion over their emotional world, at least temporarily, because they did something that led them to feel a certain way. Cap is not great at being vulnerable. So with the child, you don't want to force them to talk. But if you intuit that something is amiss or that something is going on with them, you want to invite them to connect. And if they don't want to talk, invite them to do some activity with you where you're just having a good time. And over time, they'll feel comfortable enough opening up to you about it. And remember, cancer is ruled by the moon and the moon rules our emotional life. So if your sun sign or moon sign as the parent is in cancer, you are naturally emotive and you're almost like a natural parent. You have all the materials to be a good parent. Now it's just, you know, remembering your intuition before you got distracted by all these things in life, right? And one thing real quick, cancer fathers are especially cool. When the father is a cancer sun or cancer moon, they take on this natural like caretaking role. You'll know the cancer uh, men around you because they're like naturally taking care of everyone else and you know, picking things up and you know, giving people emotional support, emotional comfort, they ask probing questions, they listen to you, they're emotionally attentive. So it's very cool. And chances are, if you are a cancer father, when you were a kid, maybe you were discouraged from sharing your emotions because many boys, frankly, are discouraged from doing that because in generations past, the emotions, feelings, intuition, those were all things that, you know, people associated with girls and women, right? That's not the case, but that's how it was in previous generations a lot of the time. So if you're a cancer father, it's possible that when you were a kid, you were not really allowed or encouraged to express your emotions and maybe you kept them all bottled up. And if that's the case, I'm deeply sorry about that. That was not right. So when you're an adult and then have a kid and you're a cancer father, you realize the importance of the emotional connection. So it's a very cool thing. And a lot of the times I find that cancer parents 
who felt like they were made for whatever reason to repress their own emotions as children, they realize how how you know detrimental that was to their healthy development, and they are dead set on their kids being allowed to express their emotions. And I love that because that makes for emotionally healthy kids, especially with a stoic side like Capricorn that does not readily share its emotional world. So to Cancer people, life is about deep meaning and connecting deeply with people on an emotional level. As we said, this is a bit more challenging for Capricorn to do. So it is very important, it is essential that the Capricorn child feel emotionally safe with the parent such that they feel safe and comfortable sharing. Now, interestingly, these signs are very compatible. Even though we're talking about the emotional differences, when you have opposite signs, you'll notice that opposite signs always have compatible elements. So when, when planets are opposite each other, a lot of the times they actually complement or even complete each other. And that's very much the case here. So they're both cardinal signs, which is great. Um, and then, you know, Cancer being water, Capricorn being earth, and earth contains water. But earth can also be flooded by water, by too much emotion. And I actually see that dynamic with Capricorn very often because Cap is stoic, doesn't always speak up for itself when it feels like it's taking on too much, and uh, finds it very comfortable to take on responsibility, even the Capricorn children, that it won't always speak up when it's feeling just completely overwhelmed. And that's one of the reasons that on this channel, I'm always cautioning parents of Capricorn children because it is very easy to parentify the child, to treat the child as almost like a parent or give the child adult level responsibility that the child is just not developmentally ready for yet. And you've always gotta be careful about that with Capricorn kids because they don't always speak up. They're very loyal and dutiful and you know, psychologically, subconsciously, they may be thinking, well, I need to do this and this and this for the family, but it's not appropriate for them to be taking on a lot of adult responsibility. Even if they're doing it, right, and don't complain, it still may not be appropriate. So as we said, CAP needs stability and structure in the home. Now, Cancer is very good at giving the emotional support, the emotional comfort, and is very good at providing a nurturing environment for the child. However, Cancer is an energy that can be very moody. It can change moods quickly. The archetype is the crab, and the crab, when it feels attacked, hides in its shell and withdraws, right? Now, Capricorn also tends to emotionally withdraw. So you may have that dynamic where, you know, the child withdraws and the parent is like, well, you won't talk to me, you're emotionally withdrawn, I'm gonna withdraw in my shell. Or the parent feels hurt, and the parent withdraws, and the child will withdraw. You wanna avoid that. You always wanna be reinforcing the connection. It is very important also that the Capricorn child get emotional consistency from the parent. So if you're a Cancer parent who gets who gets moody, and that's okay if you do. I'm a Gemini, our moods change sometimes minute by minute. I recognize that about myself. So if you if you get moody or you feel just, you know, like overwhelmed, um, it's okay to tell your child, hey, I'm gonna take a break alone for a few minutes just to rest. I will be with you shortly. That is okay. And the last big thing I wanna talk about before we get into uh, more specifics about the dynamic is it is not uncommon to see the Capricorn child comforting the Cancer parent because Cancer is a very emotional energy. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with your child seeing you emotional, whether it's you seeing you cry or seeing you upset or even seeing you angry within reason, that's fine as long as you're communicating to the child and you're saying, well, I'm upset with this, but it's okay. You know, we all get emotional. It's no, it's no big deal. Um, I just need a few minutes. That's okay. But you definitely want to avoid the situation where your child is comforting you all the time and you're not comforting the child as much or the child starts taking on this adult level, parent level responsibility. But it is generally fine for the child to comfort the parent. I remember my son when he was a toddler, you know, you know, just patting my shoulder, and that's adorable. That's okay. It's okay for them to see you emotional once in a while. You know, just to make sure that they are not taking on more responsibility than is developmentally appropriate. And also make sure that the child does not feel responsible for your feelings and it's not responsible for your happiness, it's not responsible for making you happy, or making sure you're not upset, things like that. And as I say in almost every video, make sure your Capricorn child knows that you love them no matter what. 
that your love is not conditional on whatever, on their performance, on them being nice to you, treating you a certain way, saying certain things, uh, being rude or not being rude, that you love them, whatever happens. Okay, with that, now we're gonna talk about more specifics about the dynamic between Cancer and Capricorn. So number one, as the Cancer parent, make sure you are making space for your child's emotions. The number one thing I hear from Capricorn adults is that they are not really comfortable with emotions. This goes for Capricorn Sun, but this goes even more for the Capricorn Moon placement. I also hear from Capricorn people that they sometimes tend to repress emotions, not speak up for themselves, not you know communicate to people when they've hurt their feelings or done something to make them upset or violated their boundaries because they're just not comfortable expressing emotions or they were not taught how to express emotions or deal with emotions in a healthy way. So you wanna make sure you are dealing uh, or guiding your Capricorn child to do that, to express themselves emotionally, to articulate about their emotional world when they're comfortable and deal with emotions in a healthy way, not to dwell on emotions, not to harbor ill will because they're not speaking up, right? If you repress your emotions, you don't speak up, you don't acknowledge them, that just causes a whole bunch of, you know, possibly physical problems. It can cause headaches, it can cause stomach upset, uh, you know, cause anxiety, all these things. And remember, because cancer is so emotionally expressive, there's a, a tendency for the, uh, a risk for the cancer parent to think just because the Capricorn child is not expressing their emotions, is not talking about emotions, means they don't have any, or means they don't feel deeply or they don't feel a certain way. That's not true. Just because Capricorn does not wear their emotions on their sleeve does not mean they're not experiencing the emotion. Now, Cancer is very good at validating emotions. That's one like big plus to the Cancer parent. You're very good at acknowledging your kids having these emotions. It's okay to have this emotion, validating, offering comfort, asking if there's anything you can do. It's a very nurturing energy. It, it's a natural nurturer. So it's a great placement for a parent. So just make sure you are doing all that and you're not pressuring your child to talk before they're ready, that you are letting them know that you are available for them to talk whenever they feel comfortable. Now, Cancer being a water sign, it's very easy for Cancer to, to empathize with others, to identify with others' emotions, and that can be very exhausting. Cancer feels very intensely. It's an energy that absorbs other people's emotions and that exhausts them. And to a parent, that's exhausting because kids go through this whole range of emotions from when you know they're born to when they're, you know, become teenagers and grow up, that it's exhausting for us. That when our children are hurting, we're hurting, but that's gonna burn you out. So as the cancer parent, I really recommend you find a way to observe the emotions of your child instead of absorbing them. It's okay to like feel bad when your child fe feels bad, all parents do, right? Or feel happy when your child is celebrating something and is feeling good about themselves. All parents wanna celebrate that and feel good. That's fine, but try your best not to internalize all those emotions as if they were your own, okay? Because cancer is naturally empathic and it's, it's hard to not to internalize the emotions of the people closest to them. So take care of yourself. If you are stressed, on edge, anxious, take a break. I always say do less to do more, you know, uh, cut down your activities to the extent that you can. I mean, our society today is crazy. Everybody wants everybody else to be available 24 seven. If you don't return the text, you know, immediately, people like freak out, it happened to me the other day, I was selling something on like the marketplace or something and somebody asked a question, I didn't respond within five minutes. So they're like, you know, sending me more like, aren't you gonna answer? I'm like, yeah, because of course I'm here all day just waiting to answer people's questions on Facebook Marketplace. It's ridiculous. Like we have lives. We're not, we should not be, a lot of people are, but we should not be glued to our phone just to answer texts and messages all day. We are pulled in countless different directions 24 seven. So it's harder and harder to, to, you know, stop those distractions or at least put them on hold and just rest. But that's what I'm asking you to do. You got to find ways of doing that. And you got to find ways of, maintaining healthy boundaries with other people, especially people outside your family. No, I can't do that. No, I'm not able to without over explaining. And that's a lot of what I talk about in my coaching program, you know, how the words to use to talk to people about maintaining your boundaries, what to tell them, right? 
because we expend so much energy just protecting our boundaries. And if you are a person with heavy cancer energy in your chart, remember water, like it really can't be contained. It's very difficult to be contained. So regarding boundaries, it's hard to see sometimes where the cancer person ends and the other person begins. So it's even more important for you, the cancer parent, to know when you need to be protecting your boundaries and what you need to say. Okay, water sign people generally like physical affection, physical touch. Capricorn, not as much. It's an earth sign, so there's a tactile element to the energy. It's not to say that Capricorn kids don't like to hug and stuff like that. But especially if you're a cancer mom, you may be you know, wanting to cuddle your kid well into adolescence and the teen years, and your kid may not, pretty much all adolescents, at least all adolescent boys uh, aren't crazy about like cuddling and hugging their mom. But um, you're, you may want more physical affection and physical touch than the Capricorn child. Just remember on the subject of boundaries, just remember that your kid has a right to have boundaries too. Even when they're young and they don't want to be touched, they don't want to be held, they don't want to be cuddled, you can teach them the words to use, I don't want to hug right now, thank you, or I don't want to be touched right now. And that's very important because Capricorn is not always great. Remember, at speaking about emotions, including upholding boundaries and feeling bad when they feel that their boundaries are being violated. So it's up to you, the parent, to teach them that. As we said, Capricorn children are very resource motivated. They may be motivated by money, for example. And Cancer is not motivated by stuff like that. We're motivated by feelings, intuition. It's very sensitive energy. It makes decisions based on emotions, right? But just because your cap child is more concerned or interested in material resources like money and maybe owning other things, you know, um, some kids buy like shoes and stuff and other stuff, other things. If your kid is like that, it doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. It's just different from you. And remember not to you know, use words of criticism with your child and criticize that propensity to either buy things or be concerned with material resources or be encouraged by money or things like that, okay? It's not bad, it's just different. You can certainly guide them, like what do you think about that purchase you made? Are you happy? Or if you would not have spent money on that, you would have had money to spend on this other thing that you want now. That's fine to guide them on that. You just, you just wanna make sure you're not causing them to feel bad or criticizing them or causing them to feel shame. And on that last like big topic, um, Cancer parents are excellent at teaching Capricorn kids empathy, okay? They na they're naturally empathic. They naturally identify with the feelings of others. They're naturally good at showing empathy, right? And as we always say on this channel, uh, the best way to teach kids about empathy is to empathize with the child, validate feelings, really, you know, talk about what's going on and, and make the child understand that you understand and accept how they're feeling and that they are not the only one that has felt that way, okay? And I'm gonna throw out a really interesting thing I read recently about empathy. I'm, I'm um, reading one of Brene Brown's books right now on shame, and she said, and I thought about it, and it's true, the opposite of shame is empathy. So when you empathize with your child, not only are you teaching them, you know, uh, how to be empathic with other people, not only are you teaching them that their feelings matter too, right, and are valid, you are also causing them to be resilient against shame. So when you empathize with the child, they're more able to withstand shame, which is just a horribly debilitating thing for kids to feel ashamed, right? Especially through adolescence where they're you know, embarrassed, get embarrassed so easily. So teaching your kids empathy, it just has multiple good positive outcomes. And that's one of the biggest is that it leads them to be more resilient against these feelings of shame, which so many of us internalize. So that's the last big message I want to leave you with. If you'd like more, I have a whole playlist on how to parent and reparent the Capricorn child. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and we will see you very soon. Thanks for watching.